<laughs> I'm doing that again. I'm doing that again. <laughs> Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, Ashen Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. Nani? As for today's video, we actually have an how to overclock and slash or undervolt the RX 6500 XT. Now, before starting the actual overclocking and undervolting tutorial, just let's go, just let's go. Let's just go to the common questions. Common questions. The first one is, will this work on my Aces? Will this work on my Dual Fan? Will this work on my Gaming X version? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter the brand, doesn't matter the model. The values may be slightly different, for example, in terms of core frequency, uh, because it will vary a bit depending on the model that you have, and in terms, for example, of the, um, of the power tuning. So some cards let you go, uh, let you move the slide, for example, to 20%, some to 10%, some to 50%. It depends on the model. But apart from that, it is equal and it applies to all cards and all models that are, in fact, 6500 XT cards from AMD, okay? The second common question is, will this damage my GPU? No, no it, it will, will not. not. Basically, you're not pushing super high voltages, uh, not on the VRAM department and not on the core department. So no, it will not damage your GPU, okay? You can stay safe, you can, uh, you can do this with ease of mind because you will not have problems. It may crash one or two times when you're trying to find your sweet spot, but that's all. It won't break your GPU and it won't damage it, okay? Now on the actual overclocking part, as usual, we're gonna use the AMD Radeon settings to overclock the GPU since these are the best settings you can get right now. You can use MS Afterburner, but it isn't as specific as the AMD software, okay? So right click on the desktop, show more options if you have Windows 11, and then AMD Software Adrenaline Edition, okay? Open it, then you have several things as usual, but you go to the Performance tab on the top left. Click on it, then Beside that, you have the metrics tuning and advisors and you go to the tuning tab. Once again, click on it and you'll have these settings. Okay, the system will always appear, of course, and the CPU will just appear if you have a Ryzen 5000 series. So if you have a Ryzen 3000, 2000 or 1000 series, then this menu will most likely not appear. So it will be like this, okay? Okay. Now, you have the tuning control and it is at default. So you go here to manual tuning and press custom. Bam. Now, the first thing that you actually have to do is enable everything. As you can see, for example, GPU tuning disabled, uh, VRAM tuning disabled, uh, same for all other things like the power tuning, the fan tuning and so on. So enable everything. Bam, bam. Bam, bam, bam. Enable everything and the advanced controls as well. And yeah, apply. Now that everything is enabled, okay, everything is enabled, let's start with the most important thing in most cards, okay, which is the power tuning. So, the power tuning is really important because most cards are... Most cards come power restricted, so they have a power envelope where imagine the power envelope is 180 watts, which is obviously not the case here. But let's imagine that the power envelope is up to 180 watts. So, if the card needs more power to perform better, that's where the power tuning enters, because once the card reaches the 180 watts power envelope, that it tops it out, the card will kind of... Um, will kind of throttle in terms of performance to stay within the power envelope, okay? Inside the power envelope. And that's where the power tuning comes. So just raising the power tuning to the max, in this case is 15%. In some cards you may have 20, 30, depends on the model, or even five or 10, okay? 
Um, but this is the most important setting because it doesn't mean that we it will automatically consume more power. It means that we'll co it will consume more power if it needs more power to perform better, okay? So if it is not needed at all, if it is still inside the power envelope, then you're completely fine. Your power draw won't go up, okay? Now, after that, in the in the fan tuning, for example, usually the max fan speed for my model, which is the XFX Quick or the Kick 210, you can watch the the video on the um, the top right corner right now of the unboxing of this card, uh, and we have actually a max fan speed of 84, which I find uh, really really high. I like to have mine at a max of 45%. Uh, for the noise to not be kind of annoying and I actually tested the temperatures and the temperatures were fine So there is no need and I I mean I repeat there is absolutely no need to have a max of 85% max fan speed unless you are running a really really a really really poor build in terms of airflow Okay, so if you have minimal airflow in your build 45% will be more than enough and it won't actually make you deaf when playing games Okay, so that's a thing also now let's go to the GPU tuning, okay? Uh, with the RX 6000 series, we can actually uh, select in between the minimum frequency and the maximum frequency. Usually, I advise to have the, um, the minimum frequency always 100 MHz below the maximum frequency, okay? Imagine that we have, let's put, for example, 2700 here and then 2600 here. So imagine if you go for 2700, it will drop as soon as, as soon as you make apply. It will raise the maximum frequency to 20, 2800 or it will drop the minimum frequency by 100 megahertz and it should make it like 2700, 2600, okay? You can select the same minimum and maximum frequency. So it is advised to have this minimum of 100 megahertz in between in order to keep the clocks always at max, even if you're running GPU light scenarios, for example, CSGO. If you do not select this on CSGO, the GPU clocks will go down for power saving, of course, and the performance won't be as good as before, okay? But if you select this, the GPU will stay always at a minimum of 2600. With the offset, of course, it will make like 2550 MHz, okay? But that's the point of having this, for the GPU to not drop clocks when going into GPU light tasks. For this card, since this card has really, really low uh, power draw and low temperatures, I advise you to try the first thing to the max. So, minimum frequency and maximum frequency to the max, and then apply. As you see, it decreases uh, 100 MHz from the maximum frequency automatically, and this works for me, okay? My card just works perfectly fine with a max of 2875 uh, with a minimum of 2875 and the maximum of 2975. It works just fine. No need to change everything. You can try and undervolt it, okay, for lower, frequ for lower voltages and, of course, lower power draw. You can try it. In most scenarios and in almost all scenarios, it is beneficial or beneficial, whatever. It does good. <laughs> it does good for you. Um, but it is absolutely not needed. In most scenarios... These cards are 6 nanometers uh, TSMC instead of 7 nanometers. They come from, they are kind of ported from laptops. That's why this card is so bad with PCI Express 3 because it has only 4 lanes instead of the usual 16 or at least the 8 lanes on the, on the other RX, for example, the 6600 and the 6600 XT. Uh, it has only 4 lanes, so it is quite bad. But since it is 6 nanometers, um, the process is quite improved and that's why the frequencies go higher as well and also because this card has lower compute units and so on and so on. You, you don't actually need to, to know this to overclock, but the maximum values will be completely fine. Then if you can try, you can undervolt it a bit. Let's, for example, let's decrease to 1180 first and then apply. Go try a heavy game, for example, like Control, like Warzone, some games that are really heavy on the GPU side. Just test those games, Cyberpunk 2077, for example. Test it for, let's say, like 10 minutes and see if the game actually crashes or not. If the game does not crash, then you come here and go to, for example, 1160. Apply changes. Test again. If it does not crash after 10 or 20 minutes, then time to decrease a bit more, 1140, 
and so on, so on, so on, till you reach the minimum voltage you can do for this particular uh, frequency that you're selecting, okay? Take into consideration that you'll always, and I repeat, always have the offset. As you can see, for example, I selected 1140 mega millivolts, and we are having here 1162 millivolts, okay? We will have an offset. The card will always and most commonly push a bit higher voltage than the one you're selecting, okay? Depending on the load. And that's why lower voltage, lower selected voltage will also affect the load voltage here. So if I go a bit lower here, for example, 1130, apply, the voltage should decrease a bit as well, as you see, okay? I decreased 10 millivolts and it decreased 12 millivolts here, okay? Usually at 20 or 30 millivolts offset, okay? But as, you can, as I told you before, you can just go here and put it to the max because uh, it will work perfectly fine and at least here there is no offset, okay? Um, but yeah, the most important power tuning, now the GPU tuning, okay? Now, finally, let's go to the VRAM tuning and this one is really, really interesting. So, on the VRAM tuning you have uh, the maximum frequency but it already starts with 2248 MHz. Since this is a 6 nanometers card, uh, it comes with better VRAM. The 6800, 6800 XT, 6700 XT come with a stock frequency of 2000, okay? 2000. In both my 6800 and my 6700 XT, I can go to more or less, more or less up to 2100 MHz. 2100, okay? But in my 6600 XT, it brings a, bet a better bin in the VRAM and I can actually reach 2200 MHz, all with fast timings, okay? Which is even harder to do. And this 6500 XT comes with a stock of 2248, okay? 2248. Now, the same thing is done here. You can just go and try this, okay? If the computer doesn't crash right away, you can go to Cyberpunk once again, for example, and try for 10 or 15 more minutes. If it does not crash, then you go here to the memory timings and you select the fast timing instead of the default timing. Fast timing will automatically deliver you like one or 2% more performance, so imagine in some cases even more, it can increase up to 5% performance just going from the normal timings to the fast timings. And I tested these in several cards and it is around 5%. Yes, let's say in 100 FPS, you have a 5 FPS boost just for the fast timings in some scenarios, okay? So it is a really, really good thing. In my case, I can do the fast timings with the max frequency, but I advise you to select the default timings or start with the default timings and start, for example, at 2300, okay? Test the game, 10 to 15 minutes. If it is stable, go, for example, to 2350, okay? If it is stable once again after 10 or 15 minutes, then go to 2400. And if it is stable once again after testing, then try the fast timings. That's the thing. Imagine, for example, if you are at default and you go to 20, 2300, okay? 2300 and it isn't stable. Then try decrease to 2290. Test again. If it isn't stable, decrease a bit more, 2280. And try again till you get to your safe point, okay? That's how it works. But in this case, 2400 and fast timings it is because that's what my card supports. Now, if you want to, to use these exact settings on your 6500 XT, I have the link in the description where you can actually download the profile, just download it to your computer and then go here to the symbol load profile, select the folder where it is and open it and it will automatically load my profile in your system, okay? I advise you to go step by step till you reach the point where you're safe. And I say this because some instability may appear just after, let's say, one hour or two hours of gaming, depending on the games you're playing. So if it happens that you have a crash after applying these settings and after like one or two hours of gaming, what you want to do is just basically decrease the values a bit and try again. If it happens again after some hours, decrease the values a bit more till you get to your safe place, till you get to your stable settings, okay? 
That's what I want you to do, to have a stable system that you can enjoy and play games with. Or on, play games on. Yeah, or in. I never knew this shit. Now guys, that's all for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video. Also, more videos on the 6500 XT will come. I actually have this video that I made of 25 games on the 6500 XT and the 5600X that, as, the, as its price decreased right now, so it's a good deal, by the way. Any doubts that you have, leave them in the comment section. And as usual, I'll try to help as fast as I can, okay? So do not be afraid to leave your comment in the comment section. Because we're here for that to help you um, the best we can and with the time that we have, okay? Thanks a lot and see you in the next video. Oh, hidden behind that poster that leads to the real world. We all feel safe in that room. But sometimes, sometimes something crawls out from behind the poster. And the ones that see it happen freak out and try to forget what they saw. I'm here. Why did you bring me here? Hello? Anyone here?